Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at Haywood RV of Coldwater, Michigan. Thanks for taking a second to cop a squat with me here, which uh, seems very appropriate given today's topic of conversation. Anyway, kind of a, a quick Q&A today and then a couple uh, accessory recommendations for you. This is something I've been trying to get out for a while and I finally had an opportunity to do it. I see common questions all the time and it's whether it's new RVers, uh, of which there's a lot of this year, or even experienced RVers, if you are at a site that has an on-site sewer hookup, question is, should I go ahead and pull my black and gray valves and just leave them wide open? Shouldn't all the stuff just go right down the tubes like it does at home? Well, the answer to that is an absolute resounding no. That is something you absolutely do not want to do. The reason being, RV plumbing systems work very different from your house. So you're thinking, well, you know, it should just kind of go down the thing like it does at home. But uh, you've got a holding tank here. It doesn't just go straight down into the sewer. And especially in related to the black tank, what you develop is the dreaded pyramid. <laughs> poop pyramid. If you're not familiar with the poop pyramid, that's not just a silly, nasty thing I'm making up. That is a real nasty thing that can actually happen. Uh, <laughs> here's what happens. So when you just leave the black valve open, all of the liquid waste just runs straight down the tube, kind of like you're thinking. But the solid waste, which is heavier, sits at the bottom of the tank and builds up. And it starts building up slowly over time until you get the dreaded pyramid. Well, if it's left there long enough and it dries out, you have got one awful problem to take care of. Uh, sometimes not just a black tank flush alone is going to take care of it. That'll blast some water through the tank, but chances are if you've got a, a hard buildup cake of bad news in there, that black tank flush alone is not going to handle it. You're going to have to start getting one of those wands of shame and running it down the toilet all over the place and breaking things up. and it's. It is just a bad news scenario. It's where you don't want to be. It's also one of the reasons why you, generally speaking, don't want to use anything but marine RV uh, toilet paper in your uh, RV's holding tanks. You don't want to use residential toilet paper. I know it's nicer. I know it definitely feels better. That is not lost on anybody, certainly not myself, but um, the RV stuff breaks down more quickly. So there's less fibrous, solid buildup matter in your black tank and less chances of something getting clogged or plugged uh, on the way out here. And then some people ask, well, okay, so I understand it with the black tank, but why can't I do it with the gray tank? That is sink and shower water. Is it really a big deal to leave that open? And again, the recommendation here, no, don't do it. And really it's for the exact same reasons. It just takes a lot, lot longer for it to happen in your gray tank. Um, gray tanks will have things like leftover food particles from doing dishes. Uh, you can have hair, you can have skin, all that stuff that comes off of us when we're showering, all that dirt and grime. It's, you know, it's not just water in there. There's, there's still stuff in it. And just like you can have a, a plug shower drain at home, if you uh, leave your gray valve open, you can create uh, a nice little mass of yuck in the bottom of that gray tank. It just takes a lot longer. So what you really wanna do here is, I like to wait till my holding tanks are about two thirds full. And uh, that is when I'll come out. First, I will, uh, you know, obviously have everything hooked up. I'll pull the gray or the black tank first, let that all drain out. And then I pull the gray tank after, and I do it that way for a very specific reason. The gray tank is, in a sense, it's even though it's dirty, it is kind of soapy water, and it is doing a decent number of helping flush all the stuff out of the black tank too. Now on top of that, it is, if your RV has something like a black tank flush like this has over there, or uh, if it doesn't have a black tank flush, what you can do, close your black and your gray valves, go inside and basically just put your foot on the toilet for a while, uh, to fill the tank back up to say like a third and then dump it again real quick just to give it one extra flush. If I'm going to stay at the campsite, I tend uh, to not worry about that as much, but when I'm leaving, I will give that thing one heck of a flush, whether it is putting my foot on the toilet to, to fill it up or using the black tank and I'll make sure that thing is empty. So how do you know when your stuff is actually clean? 
Well, as unattractive as it may be, that is actually one of the reasons I recommend getting yourself a, uh, a clear elbow joint here. So where this hooks into the, uh, the ground, the, the, the park uh, drain, basically. I know it's not visibly attractive, but you can now visibly see when you have or what you have coming out of your tube. You can see when it's empty. You can see when the flow has stopped because you don't want to guess, is my black tube empty? Is the holding or the, the, the drain tube, is that empty or is it maybe not empty? Nobody wants to be guessing that. You don't want to be guessing that. You, this gives you a very easy way to see when you're dumping, when you're draining, when you're flushing is complete basically. They're what, six, seven bucks, these little things. And it's one of those cases where the penalty for failure, uh, it, it just it just feels worse than a couple bucks uh, and, and a little <laughs> visible window into your fiber intake. And also folks, before you do any of this stuff, get some gloves, wear some gloves, don't be bare hand in this stuff. I don't care if you're gonna wash your hands after, don't be bare hand in this stuff. You just don't consciously realize how many times you're, you're doing anything and you just go like that because your face is sweaty. You have no idea what could be on your hands, what you just rubbed in your eyes. Bam, pink eye, that's how you get it. And if there is one accessory I recommend for people who are actually going to use the sewer system on their RVs, because not everybody does, that you actually spend a couple bucks on, it is a good, higher quality, higher grade sewer hose too. The, uh, the Rhino Flex is kind of my personal go-to. There's plenty of other good ones out there. I would love it if you left some comments, folks out there, experienced RVers to help the, our new, the newer members of our community. Um, you know, like what is your kind of go-to system right here? I like this Rhino Flex hose. It's, it's a couple dollars more, but again, this is not, hey, how you doing? You ready to go? <laughs> this is not a thing that you want to fail. These are crush resistant, so if a big clod hopper like me walking through the back of the campsite in the middle of the night steps on it a little bit, it's a lot less likely to crack and break and leave you some bad news. Or um, somebody who's cutting through your campsite, which uh, we've talked about before, nobody likes, but it does happen. This is a way to maybe prevent somebody else from stepping on your sewer hose at night when it was dark because they're trying to hurry home when you don't realize it, you know, and then you get out there in the morning and, and find out uh, maybe too late that they broke your cheaper sewer hose or anything like that. Um, there's there's a lot to learn about RVing. It can be, it can be really fun. This is uh, a less pleasant topic that not everybody enjoys talking about, but I always want to do anything I can, whether it's pleasant or unpleasant, to try to get that information out there to help everybody out. So that's your little word with the nerd for today. If you appreciate little videos like this, hit the like button on the video. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe and follow along to our family owned and operated facility here where we always have tips like this, reviews and tricks and news, all kinds of things coming out. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halo camping, everyone.